Hi, uh, today I am going to do a teardown of this vertical gyro. Well, this is a vintage gyro. There is a date on that sticker, 1971. We can see here there is an indication of the roll. There are two indications, one for the normal loft. And there is a second one, alternate OS. You can see that there is an adjustment of the scale. This permits uh, to change a little bit uh, the value here. There is an ident plate. So this thing is called a gyro catchable vertical. I don't know the manufacturer of that thing. On the top, there is that thing which, which contains a kind of salt which permits to reduce the moisture inside the gyro. You can see that there is a kind of silicone which permits to have a ceiling of that thing. Okay. It is easier than expected. Look at that. This is another beautiful mechanical device. So we can see two mercury switch. So there is one for that axis and another one for the second axis. So this permits to the gyro to keep the horizontal position. That is to say that the gyro is vertical. We can see on that side the micro switch. Normally we should have a synchro transmitter, uh, we should be on that area here. Ah no, ok, it is a potentiometer, I didn't see. Effectively, there is a weeper here, you can see. So this is a wire wand potentiometer, ok, so this is not a synchro, it is the first time I see this on the gyro. Ok, you can see the weeper here. And this is probably the same for the other axis. So we should find uh, probably a potentiometer uh, here. Difficult to see, but I think we can see the weeper here. So we can see one coil here. So this is uh, probably a precession coil, which permits to change the orientation of the gyro. And we should have another one. Okay, and there is a motor here. So this permits uh, to cage, I think, the gyro. And this thing is very beautiful. Okay, I did the quick reverse engineering of that device. We can notice that there are two capacitors connected to the gyro motor. Actually, the gyro motor is inside here. But I have checked some terminals here of the brush contacts are connected one to this capacitor and another one uh, to one capacitor. I don't remember this one or this one. And there is another capacitor here which is connected to one connection of this AC motor. So this is the motor which permits to cage the gyro. So this permits to initialize the position of the gyro. So we can see that there is a relay here. So this relay is represented on that schematic diagram here. So this is the motor which is this one here for the caging. The coil is connected to pins P and U of the circular connector. The pin A of the circular connector is connected to ground and pin B is connected to these resistors. And you can see that this is the second sir for the caging. Because of the capacitors, these two capacitors and this one, it seems obvious that the power supply is a single phase power supply. This capacitor permits to have a phase shift. Therefore, I have connected pins A and B to 115 volts power supply, 400 Hz. This is these two wires here. 
and I have connected also the coil of the relay to a 20 volts DC power supply through this switch here. So you can hear the relay. Okay, I'm going to turn on the power supply. The gimbals are locked. Okay, I'm going to activate the relay. For the last test, I would like to connect the gyro to this attitude indicator. Well, this is an ADI-70. The problem is that the input of this instrument is a synchro, but the output of the gyro is a potentiometer, which is located here, as we have seen. So I have found the, the pinout of this potentiometer. You can see the three pins here. So the whipper is in the middle here, and the two other pins are here. The value of the potentiometer is 11 kilo ohms. I will test only the pitch because it will be complicated. So we need to convert the potentiometer output into a synchro output. So there are different methods. One method is to use a synchro to digital converter and to place an ADC before the digital to synchro converter. But there is something more funny to do. I will use a servo control in order to convert the potentiometer to a synchro. So I will use this thing. Now this is a part of an Elliott air data computer I have described also. So this is a outside total air temperature module. But it is not important. The important thing is that there are two synchro transmitters. One here and the second one. So I will use only one of them, this one, because the pins are available so it will be easier to check the continuity be between the synchro and the sub-D connectors. There is a potentiometer, oh, this is very important. This potentiometer will be the link actually between the gyro and the servo control. And there is an AC motor uh, which is here. So the AC motor is also equipped with the generator, so this permits to stabilize the loop. And I will use this servo control amplifier now this is the block diagram of the servo control. The pitch potentiometer of the gyro is on the left here. The potentiometer of the servo control is here. Two potentiometers will be supplied with an AC voltage, which is isolated from the rest of the circuit here. The difference of the whipper voltages will be fed to the servo control amplifier, which is this one, which is represented on the red area here. The motor will run until the input voltage is zero, that is to say, 
that the two weepers are on the same position. The synchro transmitter will be connected to the ADI 70. The reference voltage of the AC motor here will be connected to a 26 volts AC power supply with the capacitor in series in order to have 90 degrees phase shift. So I will need to optimize this capacitor in order to have this phase shift here. The output of the generator will be connected also to the servo control. There is a second input, pin 3 of the sub connector. It is something which is often used in a servo control. Okay, so that means that there is the same current through this resistor and through this resistor. That means that the input voltage here is proportional to the velocity of the motor. Or in other words, the velocity of the motor is proportional to the error voltage. That means that when the servo control is closed to the final position, the velocity of the servo control is reduced. So this permits to have the stability of the servo control. If you don't have the control of the velocity, a small voltage can introduce a large speed of the motor. So this will give an overshoot and some oscillation on the final position. So the first thing I will do is to find the pinout of the connectors of this module. Okay, so this is the complete setup. The servo control mechanism is here. The servo control amplifier here. And the ADI is connected to the synchro transmitter of the servo control system. So the problem is that this thing was optimized for accuracy because this is the servo control which was used for the temperature measurement. So there is a large reduction between the motor and the synchro transmitter. Therefore, the response time of the servo control is quite long. But as you will see, this thing works. That's all for this catchable gyro. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.